I come from a family of ten children. I lost my brother in 19, either it was 38 or 39. He was the eldest. He died while servicing a uh, electric fuses or something on top of a pole. He got electrocuted. Okay, the rest of them, uh, the whole family was taken away and uh, the uh, year 1944 and uh, they were sent to a place called Matisalka, which was a gathering place because they had to have uh, transportation for us, cattle cars, etc. And they were, uh, they had enough to fill a train. I don't know how many hundreds of people were on that train. They we realized that we are being shipped to a place that turned out to be Auschwitz. Auschwitz Birkenau, you've heard of that. And uh, the, uh, from there, my dad, myself, and one sister, she was the one, the youngest, one year younger, two years younger than I. And the rest of the family were all children. The, the youngest, one year old, couldn't walk yet. She, my mother, the, the, those are the things that I remember. My mother carried her, and the whole family was taken by her held on to her skirt or whatever and walked after separation. And the separation, of course, you must have heard of that, took place by Dr. Mengele. Mengele, there's an article about it now, a movie made. And uh, we still didn't know what Aware, but we didn't, it didn't smell right. The whole thing, we begin to realize that this is it, that they were going to the uh, to their dad, and uh, <clears throat> well, my father turned out was with me. We were together the whole time. We turned out to be in the same camp afterwards. And uh, my sister I lost sight of, and of course the rest of the family. I watched them leave. They walked toward the building, which turned out to be the gas chambers, and eventually the chimney started up, and they smoked fire coming out of the chimneys. So we knew that things are, that this is it, that things are being, um, that this is the end of the road. While you were imprisoned at the camp, um, did you ever like cry? Did you ever want to fight back? Uh, no, there was no fight in us. We were kept out of, we were really ignorant to what's happening. We heard some rumors, but we didn't know what it's going to be like or what. Uh, I only cried when we got out to another camp, which was a camp called Monowitz. Monowitz turned out to be the area where they were building a huge, huge factory and they needed slave labor there. 
and I was assigned to uh, a company, if you will, that worked on concrete, made concrete forms and so on, and mostly the poles that surrounded the camp, which are made out of concrete. and. Uh, That's when I realized that my mother and the rest of the family were probably dead. So I took a pretty good cry at that time. It helped me much. Anyway, it didn't help, but I relieved me. The, we got a little bit of pieces of rumors from the, from the people in charge of, of camp, and uh, they told us, you know, we still didn't believe it, but that's, they let some of it out, they couldn't talk about it, and they let little bits and pieces out, which um, gave me a good clue what happened to them. The routine was, you got up early in the morning, you got a cup of coffee, so-called coffee, it was black anyway, and a, your daily ration of bread, which was black bread again. Uh, some analyzed it as mixed with sawdust. I cannot verify that. We ate it. We were very hungry. And uh, that was our ration for the day. And it was a liquid, kind of like a soup, with nothing in it except some leaves, etc. And at first we couldn't eat it, but we got used to it and we got hungry and we ate it. And then it was another soup when we finally got back to camp and we walked both ways. They even had music it or not for us, and marching music, as we exited and as we came back to camp. That was a, again, the reason for that was to, to fool us. That's all. We got fooled by that. Well, it, after a while I realized that this is it for us, and uh, naturally I was hungry very hungry. At the age of 17, you, your appetite calls for food, <laughs> and uh, I, when I was done at the end of the war, I'm jumping over here, not at the end of the war, but at the end of, of the German occupation, because they ran off for their life. and. Uh, Russians, we heard the cannons from a great distance, so we knew that they were coming close. And finally, they took us for a march to get away from the camp and the labor area. So they took us away because they tried to preserve us as forced labor. And uh, that took a couple of days, and I realized that uh, they couldn't transport us. They had no trains, the distance was great, walking snow and ice, freezing cold, and we loaded up. There were two open cars, train cars, open. No roof or anything. They put us in there and packed us like sardines. And uh, after about a day or so, they unloaded us and took us for a march. And uh, 
I realized soon that this is, oh God, they took us some kind of a side road in the snow, which wasn't plowed. We were about eight or 10,000 in that group. There may have been others followed, of course. And um, if you couldn't walk, they shot you right there and then. We passed bodies right and left. They were freshly shot and so on. Finally, we came to a clearing where they gathered us up in a, in a tight group and The German Wehrmacht, or SS, started to set up their machine guns.